Hey guys, Pat Kelly here of Mad River Outfitters. Welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. Today we're gonna to be tying Blaine Chocolate's Feather Game Changer. Um, really awesome pattern. It's just gaining a ton of popularity. It just seems like everywhere you go on social media, there's just game changers everywhere. So we've had quite a few requests to, uh, to do some of these different patterns. We're gonna do a whole series of uh, game changers with various materials. Today we're gonna to be doing the feather version. Um, Really pretty simple, it just takes a couple of different materials. We're gonna be doing it in kind of a white color scheme today. We're gonna to be using the Whiting American Hen Saddles um, that you can find on the website. Um, the two colors I'm using are just natural white and then I'm also using, um, this color is called Unique Variant. It's just kind of cool. Just has a little bit of modeling in it. It's really, just has a neat kind of fishy look to it. If you don't want to use both, that's totally fine. You can just get white and, and that would be perfectly acceptable. Um, another thing that we're going to use today, it's a newer newer item on the market, is the uh, foam prepping station from Hairline. This little gadget here makes tying game changers in a lot of different patterns, just super, super easy. So what I'm able to do is uh, in advance, I'm able to prep all of the feathers that I need for the fly ahead of time. So it just kind of speeds up tying, makes things a little bit easier. But check that out, it's pretty cool. I think you'll like it. And, and if you tie a lot of game changers or, or do a lot of production tying, you might, might find that very helpful. So we'll jump right into it. Um, like I said, today we're gonna be doing kind of the, just the generic white variation. You can do them in pretty much any color scheme you want. This one's white and chartreuse. Um, this one's kind of a pink color. Uh, this is a little bit larger kind of pike size uh, kind of in like a tan sucker color so just play around with it colors kind of uh, just whatever you like so uh, we're just going to jump on into it um, as far as tail goes there's a couple different ways you can do the tails you can use really any material you want um, i'm going to be doing today i'm just going to be using just hackle for the tail you can do them just out of marabou if you want you know i got a couple of marabou ones here that i've already tied up you can do that you can use hackle um, really the options are endless so just kind of do whatever you like like I said here we're just going to be using the hackle version I got that tied up already um, you can see in some of the other videos I've done you know how we do that but I've essentially just wrapped um, taking the the hen saddles the smallest ones I can find on the skin and just tying them kind of 360 degrees around the shank there on the back um, that first section is also a, uh, a 10 millimeter fish spine just a heads up um, Second section is going to be the same thing, a 10 millimeter articulated fish spine. So we'll go ahead and start our thread. As far as, uh, as, far as threads go, I like to use either a 100 denier gel spun um, just because it's a little bit smaller in diameter. Um, it's a little bit easier to work with on these smaller fish spines. Um, you could also use a 140 denier you know, UTC, but I've kind of settled on, uh, on gel spun. I just really like it. It's nice and strong really durable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just lay down just a little bit of super glue on that shank there. That just kind of ensures that this thread doesn't slide and move around uh, as I'm trying to uh, lock in these materials here. Um, all right, so a lot of the game changers that you see out there now are utilizing a, uh, there's various prop materials in all of them. So on this particular pattern, we're going to be using uh, Blaine Chocolate's Filler Flash, which we sell at the shop. This is going to be our prop material, more or less throughout the entirety of the fly. This is the material that will kind of uh, help us control the taper of the fly as we progress forward. So really neat material. It's just kind of a double-sided, uh, you know, flashy type. Uh, you know, longer bodied chenille, you're probably all pretty familiar with it at this point. So we're going to just tie this in first and that's going to be our prop. So once we get this tied in, we're going to just palmer it around the hook shank before we go ahead and wrap our feathers on there. So I'll tie this in. So get that locked in. And then you're basically just going to make about three turns with this filler flash. Once you get three turns there, um, before you tie it off, just kind of take it, take the material and just pull on it. Add a little bit of tension that will ensure that that material is binded down to the shank really, really well. Make a thread wrap over that. 
pull the material back, tie it off, and just kind of trim that excess out of the way there. Now, one thing that I like to do, it's not really necessary, but I like to come in and just trim this filler flash a little bit. I just like to make it a little bit shorter on these first couple of sections, just because the size of the feathers that we're not using, or that we're using uh, at the beginning of the fly is just, they're not real long. So I personally just don't like this excess flash to stick out too, too much. So I'll just kind of get in there, take your scissors and just kind of trim it back towards the rear portion of the fly there. That way there's at least a little bit of taper there. All right, so now we'll move on to our first set of feathers. Um, one of the secrets to tying the feather game changers, uh, I guess it's not really a secret, but just a tip. When you're tying these flies, you wanna start using feathers down towards the, the base um, of the hen saddle down here at the bottom. So the feathers down there are gonna be a lot narrower, a lot smaller. And then as you progress up the, up the fly, you're just gonna gradually start moving your way up the hen saddle. So if you look at this one, if you can see it on camera there, these feathers start to get wider and wider as you move up. So that's gonna help you achieve the taper that you want in the fly. So these first, uh, first three feathers that we're gonna use are gonna be feathers from the base. So they're really, really narrow. So I've already kind of pre-selected these. You can see these are relatively small. So try to find the smallest or narrowest feathers you can from the skin for these first couple of sections here. And then what we're gonna do, tie these in. I've already kind of pre-trimmed all this fluff out. Just take your fingers and kind of preen all these fibers rearward here. And you're gonna come all the way up just to the tip of the feather and just kind of trim that. Give yourself a nice clean tie in point. It's not a lot of room on these, uh, on these 10 millimeter spines, so trim that, uh, that tag end as best you can. Once you have that locked in, just kind of advance your thread forward towards the eye of the shank there. And then you're just gonna start palmering this forward. Kind of helps if you get in there and wet your fingers a little bit, kind of help preen those fibers backwards. I'm also using three feathers, um, just kind of a heads up there. I'll use groups of three, more or less, the whole way up most of the fly. Once I get towards the, uh, the last section, I'll switch over and do stacks of four just to give me a little bit denser, denser body as I move my way towards the head. Get in there, wrap that up all the way to the eye. Get as far up as you can. You wanna try not to really leave any exposed shank here. Fill this body out as nice as possible. Tie that off, trim your stems, any loose or, or unruly fibers, just kind of sweep those back up and out of the way. Before I move on, I like to get in there with a little bit of the, uh, the bone dry solar res and just kind of coat your thread wraps a little bit. So this bone dry th formula, the, the thinnest one that they make, when I go to cure it, you see me kind of flashing the light on and off. I found that if you just turn the light on and hold it over that, uh, that bone dry for too long, you can actually burn the resin. So um, I talked to the guys at, at Solar Res, and if you kind of just do this pulse with the light, it just kind of ensures that you don't burn the resin. So I've just kind of got in the habit of doing that anytime I'm working with the bone dry. So. All right, our next section, which at this point, this is gonna be our third section. Like I said, we got a 10 millimeter spine for our tail in the back. We got the next section here that we just did is 10. We're gonna do one more 10 millimeter spine. So go ahead and thread that in. Pop that guy out of the vise. One thing that's really helpful, try to attach your spine to the spine that you just tied on before you take it out of the vise. Otherwise, those little 10 millimeter ones are really hard to work with, so. All right, got that in there, it's nice and secure. Gonna do the same thing here. Start our thread just behind the eye, work our way back. 
get in there with just a little bit of super glue and just lay it on that shank there. That gel spun thread is just really, really slick. So putting a little bit of super glue on there just ensures that that thread doesn't back out or slide down the shank. It also helps the thread get a little bit of traction. So as I work my way back on the shank, I'm trying to bring my thread wraps as far up that spine as you possibly can. And what that's going to do is it's going to basically take that loop size and reduce it. You know, you really want an opening just large enough for that spine behind it to have just enough room to be able to wiggle back and forth. If that opening is too large, your, your pattern will be a lot more likely to foul. So I try to close that gap up as much as possible. The other thing that that does is it kind of ensures that you have uh, as little gap in between the sections as possible. That way, when you're done with the fly, it looks like you have, uh, you know, nice uniform you know body here what you want to try to avoid like if you look at this one it's finished if you can you want to try to avoid the breaks in your fly so you want it to kind of look like all one piece even though there's you know multiple sections in there so by tying back as far as you can on that spine it just makes everything nice and seamless so all right we're basically just going to repeat this process that we just did on the previous section here tying your filler flash make three wraps, tie it off, and then we'll do um, another set of uh, hen saddles. When I'm working on these 10 millimeter spines, one thing I like to do is I will trim away some of the fibers from the core. That just gives me a little bit cleaner tie-in point since room is kind of limited on these smaller spines. We'll move on to our next set of saddles. Again, using three if you look at this next section or this next set rather they're just a little bit wider than the previous set so again my first set i was looking for the narrowest feathers i could possibly find down here this next group i just jumped up the saddle just a little bit and that's going to give me a little bit wider feathers which is going to help start shape our fly All right, so at this point, we got three 10 millimeter spines in total. We have our tail section, and then we have two 10 millimeter spines with the uh, polymered hen saddles. We're now gonna jump into the first hook, which is gonna be an A-Rex Gamorous number four. <laughs> Pop that in your vise. I like to bring my thread just a little bit down into the bend here. Um, what I'm going to use for my articulation point is going to be a shank. You can also use wire. I just take one of the fish spines, cut the eye of it off, and uh, what we'll do is we will just take the back end of the fly, thread it right onto that loop like such. If you have some side cutters handy, that is definitely helpful. Just cut that eye off, and then what we can do is we can just lay this right up onto the hook shank. And kind of secure that down. Just like I did on the previous sections, you want to try to close this loop up as best as you can. You're trying to, to close that gap there. What you want to try to avoid is if you have a really big open loop like that, what can happen is this can swing all the way around and foul while you're fishing it. So if you take that thread and just kind of work your way all the way back, close that up, still open enough to allow this to swing freely side to side, but it uh, can't come really any farther forward than this. Just lay down a little bit of super glue. That way those wraps don't want to slip off of that uh, little ring eye back there. A 
and pretty much just more of the same. We're going to tie this in just like we did on the last sections. Nothing's really changed. One thing I do like to do at this stage of the fly is I will wrap my filler flash about halfway up this hook shank. So I'm really just going to bring it just past the point where that bottom section that returns down on the bottom of the shank. As soon as I get to that portion, I'll stop, which is about the halfway point here on this number four hook. So get in there. I like to do pretty tight side by side wraps. About every third wrap or so, just kind of take it and just pull. And that will make sure that your filler flash is tied down and, and sec as secure as possible. If that's loose at all, what can happen is you know a little fish tooth or something can get up underneath it and just tear it out. So every third wrap, just by pulling on it, just make sure everything's closed down really tight against the hook shank. It's going to make for a much more durable fly. And we'll be ready for the next set of feathers. <laughs> All right. This will be the last section that I kind of trim down the filler flash on. After this, we'll just use it at its full length. So still sticking with three hen saddles here. Nothing's changed. They got just a little bit bigger. So you can see a little bit wider. You know, each set of hen saddles that you use on each section of this fly should get progressively wider, which is going to help you achieve that size and taper in your fly. So So now as you look at this fly here, starting to get a little bit of that teardrop shape. You know, we're kind of right in here at the wrist of the bait fish is the smallest portion of the bait fish. And then you can see as we are starting to work forward, we're gradually increasing the size of that feather and, and starting to create the taper. So go ahead and just whip finish that, tie it off. Add a little super glue or uh, UV resin. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna move on to a 15 millimeter spine. So a little bit longer, this is the next size up. If you're relatively new to tying game changers, you may consider buying. Um, there's a, a little sample pack that you can get of these uh, that come. I think you get four. I think you get four of each size. So you get 10 mils, 15 mils, 20 mils, and 25 millimeter spines all in one pack. If you're going to do uh, a lot of game changers, we also sell them, you know, individually by sizes. You know, you can get a pack of just 10 millimeter spines. Slide that 15 millimeter through the eye. That thread secure. And again, just lay down a little bit of super glue. Help give your thread some traction. Close that loop up and then kind of walk that thread as far back as you can. All right, so we're going to tie in some more filler flash. You can stick with pearl if you want. I'm just going to mix it up a little bit and use some of the uh, some of the gray color. It's kind of got a little bit of blue in it. Just kind of looks fishy to me. but white would totally be fine. All right, get that tied in and bring your thread all the way forward. 
and just like we did on that last section we're going to take our filler flash and we're going to wrap this all the way up to the point of the 15 millimeter spine where that bottom section ends there so take it all the way um, past that and then you can tie it off there Just like you do with the feathers, just kind of take your fingers and just kind of stroke or bring those fibers backwards. Once you get those first three wraps in, just kind of give it a little pull. Just to make sure that filler flash is, is bound really tight to the, uh, to the shank. Clean that up. Cut off your excess, and now we're going to move on to our next set of saddles. So again, still three, still three hen saddles here, if you notice, and just a little bit wider yet. So as we work our way up the fly, we're going to work our way up the saddle here, or down as it were if it was on the bird, but now we're kind of right into the midsection of the saddle here. Just take that feather as far up the shank as you can. Try to get right up tight to the eye. Get in there and trap it with your thread. Trim them off. You can see now here too where we left that filler flash. It's full length. That's helping to uh, add some lift to our feathers here. So once I get this tied off, I'll pull it out of the vise and show it to you. We're at that point now where we're kind of getting close to the shoulders of the fly. So we need to, uh, to build a little bit more height into the pattern. Cut that off. A little bit of resin. All right, this is going to be our last spine that we're using. This is still going to be 15, so that's two 15 millimeter spines in total. But if you look, we're starting to build that taper. You can see the fly is kind of progressively getting taller as we move forward towards the head of the fly. Bring that thread all the way back. When I'm tying this filler flash off, once I get that tag in secure, I like to take my thread and just kind of walk it back over that tie off point just to make sure everything's trapped down and, and tied in really secure. We don't want that slipping out. <clears throat> All right, moving forward here, going just a little bit wider again on the feathers. Right when you finish tying everything off too, just take a look at the, uh, the saddles. Just for some reason there's any fibers that you may have trapped, you can kind of get in there with your bodkin and just kind of pick them free. Make sure everything's sitting the way you want it before you tie it off. Looks pretty good. Now 
you don't necessarily have to whip finish each section either. You can even just throw a half inch in there. We're going to be, you're always going to be covering it up with a resin or a super glue anyway. So half inch is definitely fine. Usually about three bursts with the light is really all you need with this bone dry. If you're using a really high output light too, as soon as that resin starts to cure, you'll kind of see it smoke a little bit. As soon as you see that smoke dissipate out, you know the resin's cured up all the way. All right, we are done with the spines. Now we will move forward and get into our front hook. The hook I'm using is, uh, this is the Gamagatsu Newer Gamagatsu hook. It's the SL12S short in the uh, in the one knot size. I like this a lot for my for my feather game changers. It's nice wide gap, short shank. It's not a super fine wire hook. It's got a little bit of weight to it, so that's one of the reasons why I like it. Just like we did on that middle hook, you're gonna bring your thread all the way down to just into the bend there. And what we're doing by taking that thread down into the bend, we're just ensuring that uh, the spine that we use for the articulation point. You don't ever want that spine sitting on a bare hook shank, otherwise it'll kind of pivot and twist around on you a little bit. All right, thread that on. And before you cut it, it's helpful. Once you get that back section looped on there, just kind of hold that spine up to your hook, kind of see where it sits. And then uh, I'm using the 25 millimeter spine so it ends up being just a little bit longer than that hook shank is. So you end up needing to cut off the eye plus, you know, maybe another eighth of an inch off the spine. All right, lay that up there. Make sure everything's nice and flat and flush. Ideally, this, uh, the, the loop on the back end of that spine is going to be about the same height as the eye of the hook. Trying to keep all that in line is going to be really important just to allow the fly to swim as, uh, as true as possible. If you get that loop kind of crooked or off to one side or the other, the fly tends to track a little bit funny in the water. So take your time with that part. Just make sure everything lines up. I've invested enough time into this fly at this point. You want to make sure it's right. Once you have that in place, kind of go over that with just a little bit of super glue. And I'll go over that with really nice tight locking wraps with my thread just to make sure that spine's really locked in tight. All right, that looks good. All right, back to our filler flash. Again, just trim away some of those fibers. Just give yourself a, just expose that core. It's going to give you a cleaner tying point. It's also going to allow you to tie that material down a little more securely. All right, once you get that locked in, kind of bring your thread forward. And what we're going to do is I'm going to bring this filler flash, again, just about halfway up the hook shank, and then we'll tie it off. This is the one portion of the fly where I want this prop section or this filler flash to be as dense as possible. So you want to make these wraps as tight as you can, as close together as you can, and uh, essentially you're trying to put as much of this filler flash as possible between here and halfway up the hook shank. So take your time with it. You wanna make this really, really dense. I'm not gonna do anything fancy with the head of this one. We're just gonna finish with a feather, well, with feathers. You know, one thing you can do if you wanna get a, uh, a fly that maybe pushes a little bit more water 
give you a little bit more of aggressive side to side. Instead of just finishing with feathers, you can take and put in a little quarter inch body tubing, you know, right after the filler flash, tie in some body tubing and then do your last set of feathers over top of that. The other thing you can do is wrap your filler flash, you know, go in there with your hen saddles and then take the rest of the hook shank and take a couple of rash, uh, wraps with, uh, you know, one of the brushes. Nice thing about these game changers is it's, it's really not a specific pattern. If you think of it more as a, just a platform, there's just so many different things you can do with it, different materials you can use. About at the halfway point there, bring my thread back, we'll tie this off. Again, kind of pull on that filler flash, make sure it's nice and tight to the shank. Clean that up. All right. Again, just kind of get in there and make sure you haven't trapped anything. Looks good. All right, now we're gonna move on to our last set of white. Oop, almost ripped my mic off. It's gonna be our last set of white hen saddles. Now, if you want to, you can finish this fly with white hen saddles. You can take this all the way up to the eye if you want. Uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna do white all the way up, you'll probably need to do two sets. So you'll tie in your first three, wrap them all the way forward. You'll have to tie in another set. I'll probably finish this with maybe some grizzly or chartreuse or something, just to break it up a little bit. Now at this point of the fly too, I do like to leave a little bit more of that fluff. You know, we, we did our best to try to trim all of that out of the other feathers. Now that we're at the front portion of the fly, that added density is going to help us push more water. It's going to get the fly to swim better. So I'll leave a lot of that uh, extra fluff on there once we make our way up to this head section. Kind of preen all those fibers backwards down towards the base. And again, now this should be the widest uh, hen saddle of the whole fly. Just kind of take your time with it. off that tie-in point. You can see now here I've just left uh, just a little bit of room. Instead of finishing with white I'm going to get in there and take a couple of grizzly saddles I think and just to add a little bit of contrast up at the head. Let's see what I got like in here. All right this is the same same product as the white. This is the American whiting American uh, Pen saddle. I'm going to get in here and just take a couple of grizzly feathers just to break up that white just a little bit. And you're not going to need the whole feather, so you don't need to go or start all the way up at the top of the feather. Just kind of get in there, make your tie in point kind of right where the longest, uh, some of the longer fibers are on the feather. Don't need to worry about taper too much at this point of the fly. This is just going to be an accent color.
Get in there and tie that off. Now I did not do any eyes on this particular pattern. Um, <clears throat> there's a couple different things you can do. There's just kind of whatever you like. You know, your 3D eyes, you can do that. <clears throat> I tend to not put these on just because I don't like to, I, I feel like the 3D eyes, at least on the feather game changers, by the time you glue those things on, uh, it's just gonna smash your profile. You could use tab eyes, that's an option for sure. You know, the, uh, the, the jungle cock eyes are a great option. ProTube makes a really awesome synthetic jungle cock. It's probably the best that I've ever found. It's a lot more durable than the natural. It's also a heck of a lot more affordable too. So that's also an option. You can finish your fly that way. Um, <clears throat> as you can see here, finish that one with chartreuse. I mean, there's all th sorts of things you can do with this. You know, this one's got little peck fins on it. <clears throat> that's a nice little touch. I don't think it necessarily adds to the action of the fly, but gives you the profile that you want. This one's got a brush head on it. So there's just a million things you can do with this. Um, that just kind of gives you the basic technique, the basic ideas of the feather game changer. Kind of take that, build upon it, do what you want with it. Um, really, really cool pattern. If you haven't tied them before or fished them, definitely give it a try. I think you'll like it a lot. Very addicting style of uh, a fly to tie, that's for sure. So again, thanks for watching. All the materials uh, that we used are gonna be linked down at the bottom. If you have any questions about this fly, just give us a call. Uh, shoot us an email. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. Subscribe, says my camera guy. If you like this video, hit subscribe. It helps out a lot. And check out these videos. We think you might like them too.